It's a story now making international news. A Metro Detroit woman in a battle to get her vehicle from an off-site parking lot near the airport in Toronto. The pandemic hit just as she was traveling and crossing the border and getting the car back has since been impossible. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester joins us with an update to the story and Hank, I understand the car has now been located. Yes, Kimberly, uh, we have the car. We've been able to track it down in the lot still, but here's the big issue that remains. Getting it to Detroit is not only complicated, it's incredibly costly. There it is, covered in snow, just sitting there in this once thriving off-site parking lot near the airport in Toronto. Kim Richardson's car hasn't moved from this lot since last March. While we were gone, the pandemic like hit full force and Canada wound up shutting its borders. Kim flew out of Toronto early last March pre-pandemic shutdown. Her return flight was rerouted to Detroit Metro, her car trapped since. A Canadian TV crew heard about our report and is now on the story in Toronto. They spoke with the owner of the lot on the phone. I have to have expenses too, right? I got employees, I got this, I got that. Uh, you know, I have lighting, I have expenses. It's not like I'm, I don't operate for free. I mean, I've, I've lost uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, I mean, if they wanted to, I mean, they should have came and got the car right away. Management claims other Americans in similar situations had their cars shipped home. And he says he needs Kim's full payment, $2,800 for the lot fee, because he's struggling too. It's a ticking clock, right? I don't, I don't understand. Like, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, uh, uh, Business is, uh, is, is down. I'm, I'm not making any money at all. I'm losing my shirt and, I, and uh, people that leave their car, they're paying. She's the only one that hasn't paid. He also claims he only heard from Kim recently, but she says that's not true. She called many times and these emails show she did reach out in April and May of last year, but she would only receive a generic reply. And the crew that shot that video tells us they did see vehicles with other U.S. license plate in license plates rather still in that lot. I should tell you, our neighbors in Windsor and the surrounding areas, they've been incredibly kind, sending me emails offering to drive to Toronto to get the vehicle themselves. The issue, though, would be bringing it back here to Detroit, uh, not only having to pay that twenty eight hundred dollars, but then, of course, the shipping fee to get that car across the river. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, back to you. How nice of our Windsor friends, though, that are watching. Uh, Hank, before you go, I want to ask you, though, I, I, when people reach out to you for help, you're used to working alone to get a resolution, but this time you're collaborating with a Canadian counterpart. So just tell us a little bit what yeah. that's been like. And Kimberly, it's been incredibly helpful. You know, these Canadians, they are so nice, <laughs> uh, first of all. But it's great to have boots on the ground, a reporter who's there in Toronto mm -hmm. making contact with the people going to the lot physically. They are hopeful for a resolution. Uh, so we're doing whatever we can on our end here in Detroit to get that vehicle home to Kim. Yep, all Back right. To you. Keep us posted, Hank. We appreciate it.